Good evening, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny. Time to make another video. It is 8.20 here in West Michigan. It is August the 16th. It is a Friday. It's a Friday night here. <coughs> I still got a, some kind of, I got some kind of cold. I get stuffed up head and I'm coughing and I don't know what it is. At first I thought it was allergies, but I never get allergies. I don't know what it is. Some kind of late summer cold. So yeah, it's August the 16th. It's a Friday and it is 8.21 in the evening. My wife works this weekend, so she's, off, she's working Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I can sit here and talk to you guys. <laughs> First of all, thank you for all the happy birthday wishes. I really appreciate that. Uh, I wish I could make a comma on every single happy birthday, but you all know that I appreciate those happy birthdays. And I had a good birthday. Um, like I said, we went out. Well, first of all, Thursday was my birthday. Let me see, I got my calendar here. Yeah, Thursday. It was the 14th was my birthday and we my wife and I we left early so I could visit thrift stores and look for used books so we did that we went to Goodwill Salvation Army uh, Humane Society and and then we met up with Caleb and Emily Josephine and Cora at Crazy Horse Steakhouse around five o'clock and had a nice meal with the with the fam and then we went over Caleb and Emily's for cake and I came home Carol stayed and played with Josephine and it was a nice day simple so now I'm officially 76 years old for my birthday uh, well, I told you about it. our oldest son gave me really loud uh, speakers for our new computer. It plays really loud <laughs> music off the computer. Uh, really nice speakers. And uh, I got a card from Josiah and Hannah and Marika and M uh, Bethany, our daughter, and her husband Andy sent me an Amazon gift card and. Carol gave me a birthday card and I just showered with love. <laughs> so uh, today I ended in my I started my second second folder. As I've always said, I go from the first of the month to the 15th and then on the 16th I start the second folder and I ended on page 732. For the year 2019, we have 136 days left in the year 2019. So it's Friday. I don't know. Uh, I haven't. I kind of been reading the same things. I, I have to confess. I, I'm kind of feeling a little depressed. It could be my cold. I. I I've mentioned over, I, I looked the other night how many videos I've made. I've made 1,109 videos. Now, some of those videos are videos of grandchildren, of nature, Lake Michigan, but I probably have made around 1,000 videos since I started making videos in BookTube and YouTube. So, uh, the point is, is that I try to make my videos as a manifestation of my reality as a Christian bookworm. <laughs> and it's kind of like an extension of my diary because I post all these videos into my live journal, Crooked Fingers. And uh, as I said, I would like to be able to make videos that was not on BookTube. Some other place that you could make videos and not be like in BookTube or YouTube. But I don't know how to do that. 
But today I read, I've been reading, today I volunteered at the library to use bookstore, the book nook. Well, this morning I got up and like I, the point was I hadn't felt like reading my Christian books this morning. But when I have felt like reading them, I, I showed you this new book I got in the mail this week, Christ, Biography, Memory, History, and the Rel Reliability of the Gospels by Greg S. Keener. This is a very dry academic book, but um, I kind of knew that because I've read other books by him. He tends to be very dry, academic, uh, straightforward, you know. And I have been reading Biblical Theology of the New Testament by Peter Stalmark Stalmarker. I've read in this uh, 400 pages of this, and it's over 900 pages, so I'm almost getting halfway through it. I haven't got burnt out yet on it, but that's the point. Uh, I am kind of mentally stuffed. <laughs> I got a lot in reading these books, these two books, and reading also The Divine Christ, Paul, the Lord Jesus, and Scriptures of Israel by David B. Capps. I'm kind of mentally kind of stuffed. <laughs> and so I read books like this, Another Roadside Attraction by Tom Robbins. This came out in 1971. It's uh, it's a book I remember from high school and uh, and seeing it around in communes and people you know sitting around and when we smoke marijuana and hashi and I've always wanted to read it. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain what it is, but um, maybe when I finish it. If I finish it, I'll do a little review of it. But I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it's not what I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be kind of fluff. But it is very well written. I like the characters. Uh, it takes place in the state of Washington. It's, you could say what we, what we would call it's the characters are hippies. But I don't like that. I never, I never really liked hippies. But people who were just into nature, people into, you know, you know, metaphysics, astrology, mushrooms, psychedelics, people who, you know, people who are just free spirits. Anyway, I'm really enjoying it. And I got from the book nook, I brought home two used books for our library. I got this book. It's called The Agerian, Agerian Civilization by Gustav Glutz, member of the Institute of France and professor of Greek history at the University of Paris. This came out in 1925. I don't know. I looked at it and I grabbed it and I don't know. It looked interesting. I like reading about ancient Greece and the ancient world and so I just grabbed it. And then I got this book at the book nook today. My bookstore my bookstore writers celebrate their favorite places to browse, read and shop. Introduction by Richard Rusko. Richard Rusko is one of my favorite American writers. Uh, I just recently showed uh, a volume of short stories by Richard Rusko, but I really like him, uh, especially his uh, novel Nobody's Fool by Richard Rusko. So I got this, these two books today at the book nook. I have been visiting thrift stores. I do have stacks of used books, uh, thrift store books that I will show tomorrow night if I'm still here on the planet Earth. Uh, I did get a, a new book in the mail today. I was going to show these. Uh, I got volume seven of the works of William Perkins. Now William Perkins was considered the father of English Puritanism. He lived in the 
oh, 16th, 17th century. Well, he was born in 1558 and he died in 1602. It says here, William Perkins earned a bachelor's degree in 1581 and a master's degree in 18, not 18, 1584 from Christ College in Cambridge. During those student years, he joined up with Lawrence Chatterton, who became the personal tutor and lifelong friend of Perkins. Chatterton met with Richard Greenham. Richard, Richard Greenham was another famous Puritan divine. Richard Rogers was another famous English Puritan divine. I have books by both these men. Uh, they're not, they're like Puritan reprints. Others in the spiritual brotherhood at Cambridge and espouse Puritan convictions. From 1584 until his death, Perkins served as lecturer or preacher at Great Sandy, St. Andrew's Church, Cambridge, most influential pulpit across the street from Christ College. He also served as a teaching fellow at Christ College, catechized students at Corpus Christi College on Thursday afternoons, worked as a spiritual counselor on Sunday afternoons. In these roles, Perkins influenced a generation of young students, including Richard Sibbs. I have the works of Richard Sibbs in our library. John, Cutton, John Cotton, who I have in our library. John Preston, I have his writings in our library. And William Ames, I have his library, his books in our library. Thomas Goodwin, I have his works in our library. These are all very famous 17th century English Puritan divines, ministers, preachers. They wrote, you know, tons of books. Well, mostly sermons, expositions, treatises. Uh, devotional books. Uh, Thomas Goodman wrote that when he entered Cambridge, six of his instructors who had sat under Perkins were still passing under his teaching. Ten years after Perkins' death, Cambridge was still filled with the discourse of the power of, of Mr. William Perkins' ministry, Goodwin said. Perkins' influence as a theologian continued unabated after his death. This was due to, in large part to the widespread popularity of his writings. His writings were translated into several European languages, greatly influenced British and American Reformed theology, the Dutch Further Reformation, and European Pietism. These are, works are being reprinted by Reformation Heritage Books. This is volume seven. This is uh, the Doctrinal and Polemic Works, Volume 5, Volume 6, and Volume 7. Volume 7 is called on um, our treatises in uh, called the Reformed Catholic Problem of Forged Catholicism, w Warning Against Idolatry. So William Perkins is analyzing uh, Roman Catholicism as it was being manifested in the 17th century. Of course, the Puritans were the purifying the church from idolatrous practices. Volume 6 came out. This is another polemic work. This one is The Golden Chain, The Manner and Order of Predestination, a treatise on God's free grace and man's free will, fruitful dialogue concerning the end of the world, and on memory. And uh, this one just came out. Then you have volume five. This is also in the doctrinal and polemic works. This is on the foundation of Christian religion, exposition of the, of the creed, and exposition of the Lord's Prayer. Then you have volume four, which is... Exposition of the Epistle of Jude, Exposition of the Revelations, chapters 1 through 3. Then you have volume 3 of the works of William Perkins. This is a commentary on Hebrews 11, which is found in the New Testament, the Epistle of Hebrews, chapter 11. Then you have volume 2, which is a commentary on the Epistle of Galatians. And then lastly, 
by M1 is of the works of William Perkins is the a digest or harmony of Old and New Testaments combat between Christ and the devil Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 through 11 it's like exposition of those verses and uh, a sermon on the mount Matthew chapter 5 through 7 so this is a lot of reading uh, as you all know that I've been reading the, the English Puritans for 45 years and because I am a Protestant, I am uh, in the, the Puritan tradition as far as Christian spirituality. I am Reformed. I am a Calvinist. And I have a love for the Puritans. I have a love for the ancient fathers. I have the love for all those who seek to glorify and serve the Lord Jesus Christ according to scripture according to the Bible now you can you can think up your own way of serving the Lord but we have to go according to what the Bible says because we don't want to fall into idolatry false worship I mean there are there is a true way of worship a biblical way of worship and that's what the Puritans sought to do to purify the church of all practices of worship that was contrary to scripture. And that's why I'm always saying in my videos, we have to go by the Bible, the authority of scripture. The Bible is to guide us. Now, I, I read William Perkins, I read, you know, Greg S. Keener, I read New Testament scholars, but everything is judged by scripture. What saith the Lord in the Bible? And also, as I've said, that there is a consensus throughout church history on what the Bible teaches. And that's what William Perkins does, what John Calvin does, Martin Luther. They go back and says, what did the ancient church say about the sacraments? What did the ancient church say about salvation? What did the ancient church, and going back to the, the very early, early, uh, early history of the church, and some way along the way, as we got towards the 17th century, uh, the Roman Catholics had sway, had gotten away from their roots. And so the Reformers, the Protestants, were calling them back to not something new, but what to have been confessed and believed for thousands of years. Calvin and the Reformation, the Protestants, didn't come up with a new religion they were saying, no, let's go back to what the church has always confessed and believed since the time of the apostles. So, uh, and you'll see that if you, if you get into the history of Christianity and you compare the writings of John Calvin with Augustine or Origen or Bernard of Caveau or Ambrose or even Thomas Aquinas, there is, a, there is a, a stream of classical confessional Christianity. And that's what I go by. Because uh, there are certain things about the Reformed faith, as you all know, that I don't agree with. I don't, I don't, I don't hold to, to Reformed view of infant baptism or the, the Lord's Supper, things like that. The view of the law, covenant theology, you all know that. But anyway, today I got volume seven of the works of William Perkins. There's, there's still volumes eight, Discourse on Conscience, three books on Cases of Conscience, Treatise Where the Man is Damnation or Grace, volume nine. These are all practical works, volumes eight, nine, and 10. They're all practical, I won't list them all. But I'm really excited. I mean, I've always wanted William Perkins. Like I said, he is the father of English Puritanism. And he is, there's a lot of things out there to read as a Christian. And you can't go wrong reading, reading William Perkins. Now, you can't go wrong reading the, reading the Puritans. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there in Christian bookstores and 
But you can't go wrong reading the Puritans, or even a person like, uh, you can't go wrong reading this, Biblical Theology in the New Testament by Peter Starmarker. You can't go wrong reading those, you can't go wrong reading Craig S. Keener. Now with him, as I said, he's a Pentecostal, he's somewhat Armenian, a Methodist, I don't, I don't, I don't hold to Armenianism, but as far as his view of, he's a conservative when it comes to understanding and interpreting the Bible. He's pretty good in the middle. He's not, he's not a radical liberal. So. so yeah, so that's my book world. I don't know, tomorrow, like I said, I'm kind of burnt out. I'm kind of stuffed. So I don't know. I probably will look at the William Perkins again. I got them all out. I'll write in my diary. I got books coming in the mail Monday. They were supposed to come today, but Amazon said there was some natural disaster that prevented them de mailing, delivering these the book today. So I don't know. So I hope they get over this cold. I hope you have a good reading weekend. I hope you're all doing well. Once again, thank you for all the happy birthday wishes. Thank you for the new subscribers. And till next time, bye.